let's go and have a look. Let's get a little bit closer. Welcome to Anything That Moves, and I'm Thomas, and uh, welcome to the bridge of Superstar Virgo. Um, this is my regular job as uh, I'm a safety manager on uh, this cruise ship operating in Asia for Star Cruises and uh, I've been working in the company for about five years. I started five years ago here as a third officer. Um, now I'm the safety manager which means that I'm responsible for the safety training and the drills of the crew and uh, make sure that we have all the safety equipment up to uh, regulations and standards. In brief, I also have uh, watch keeping hours on the bridge. If we are at sea in the mornings, I share the share the eight to three o'clock watches with the or eight to, to two o'clock watches with the chief officer, who is responsible for um, deck maintenance. He is now working on deck, and he will come up and relieve me in uh, about uh, three hours' time. So, uh, in the star cruises, we always have. Uh, two certified officers on watch when we are at sea, uh, one navigator uh, and then one support officer, third officer. Um, so basically uh, there is always one person in the cockpit if one of us needs to leave the cockpit this area here then uh, one always ha has to stay so there's always one person in the cockpit. Now, now we are at the open sea, we are in the East China Sea and uh, not much traffic, no traffic at all actually on our radars so this is a good opportunity to show you a little bit about of the uh, bridge equipment. Well, first to tell a little bit about the ship okay. the, the Superstar Virgo it's built 1999 in Papenburg, Germany okay. And uh, she's one of the fastest cruise ships around. She has a top speed of 24.5 knots. Uh, last week, with the current uh, with us, actually, we made 27 knots. Uh, and the uh, week before that, uh, the guys on the bridge then made 28 knots. So she's a really fast, really fast ship. And uh, uh, kept in a very good condition. She's, she's 18 years old now, but she is. I would say that there are ships that are five years, only five years old, that are in the in the worse condition than this one. So it's it's really well kept, and uh, it's a combination, I think, of good construction, good build quality, and uh, good crew and uh, uh, money enough to keep keep her in a good in a good um, condition. Uh, she has a gross tonnage of around 75,000 tons, a uh, uh, displacement of uh, around 40,000 tons, and uh, length is 268 meters. And uh, uh, the highest part of the ship is 49.6 uh, meters above the sea level. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, 2,274 passengers aboard and 986. Uh, crew members. On long international voyages we have a total capacity of uh, 3,600 persons on board. On short international voyages 4,240 uh, uh, people, on, uh, persons on board. So, just to introduce you to my colleagues here, we have Renato. Hello, good morning. Good third officer. I've been sailing in, with him on uh, the Superstar Gemini also, but uh, now we are both uh, on the flagship, Superstar Virgo. We have Gary, best lookout in the company. Yes. So we always have a lookout. He is not supposed to do anything else, no auxiliary tasks while on duty. If I want the coffee, for example, then I will ask my support officer to go and get the coffee for me. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about how we navigate the ship. We, ha we do have the, the one, this is the electronic, the approved electronic chart uh, that we have, that we are using. Uh, you can zoom out and show if we can see some land anywhere. So as I said, right now we are in 
in the middle of the East China Sea. <laughs> There's really, really, yeah. Here you can see. Here we have China. Here we are, have Shanghai, where we are going. This is our track. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Uh, basically, and we are right now. We are on the way from Kagoshima, in Japan. So this is our current itinerary. We do not use any paper shards anymore. Only we only use paper shards uh, where there is no electronic uh, shards uh, available. Uh, there are both negative and positive things with the electronic shards. The, the positive thing is that you can set alarms. You can get uh, the system to trigger warnings if you are heading towards uh, danger or yeah. So that is what I would say the positive thing about the electronic shards. There are a lot of uh, it makes life a little bit more complicated also sometimes with an electronic short. But uh, in general, for the safety uh, of the of the navigation, I think it is good with the electronic shorts. And then we have the radar, where we also have uh, we also have some objects that are short. Uh, underlay that means that below the radar picture we can decide how much information we want to see so this is the this is our main tool of anti collision this is how how we this is where we decide where to go in order not to collide with other vessels okay so how we steer the ship we steer the ship with this one uh, this is um, small tiller where we can decide what is the radius of the next turn and where we want to turn. We can also set the next turn by setting next course and then I'll just for example I will show you on the screen I will put Hello, Bridge, good morning. Okay, I will put the course of due north yes, I like okay and then you will see our Wait, curved headline will indicate a due north course up here right this one uh, if I want to execute this turn, I just press execute. I can also change the radius of the next turn to, for example, uh, here we have the radius. The radius button is here. I can change this to three miles, for example, which will be okay with this speed. Uh, so it can go down to three miles. And when I change it, the radius here, this uh, turn will become tighter. Okay. We will not make a turn now. I will just uh, give you an example on how to how to how to set the turn. So basically, the autopilot is not like we are going. We're not doing anything. We are uh, the autopilot is making is controlling the rudders for us. So we decide. We have three different modes. We decide if we want to uh, where we want the heading of the ship to be, where we want the uh, bow of the ship to point, or we go in course mode as we are now that will more or less be the same as the heading in this condition because we don't have any uh, uh, drift to talk about so we are more more or less not setting e e neither to starboard nor to port so um, but the course mode will compensate for the wind and for the for the current so that we will still go to where we want to go Otherwise, if you're in heading mode, you have to do that uh, manually, so to speak. Then we also have the track mode. We very seldom use that one, but the track mode is actually following the following the laid out track that, that the first officer has planned when he made it, the, the passage planning. So then we will actually uh, follow the track. However, you can very seldom follow the track because there's always along the way there's some fishing boats or some vessels that you have to... Um, that you have to turn for, so then you have to exit the track mode and go to course or heading mode. So uh, basically, uh, as I said, you very seldom use track mode. Now we also have other means of steering if the uh, autopilot should fail, or if, um, for example, we are in tricky waters where the current is changing a lot, or when we go into ports before we start maneuvering, we will use the hand steering the tiller here this is done in star cruises by the navigator we do not have a dedicated helmsman as many other uh, especially cruise uh, cruise lines have I don't know 
why, why they are using that old-fashioned way of uh, uh, of steering. Uh, we can control the rudders well from this tiller. I will not switch it over now because it's we can do it, but it's not uh, advisable to do in the, this uh, in, in higher speeds. Uh, we also have uh, we also have a uh, uh, steering wheel here at the back, and this one will be the position of the helms helmsman. But we are never using it except for before departures that we, sh we test that it's actually working. Of course, we have controls on the bridge wings as well, so that is where the staff captain and the captain will from where they will uh, maneuver the ship when we berth and unberth. Okay, and uh, here are the engine controls. We have four engines, uh, but they also, of course, produce electricity for the entire ship, so not all of it is used for propulsion. Right now, we are running on two engines. Uh, and we are making 17 knots at the moment, 17.6 knots through the water. So basically everything here is like we have redundancy in everything. We have uh, two GPS's, we have an addition system which we are using as our position uh, reference and speed reference that is the marine star that is a combination of, uh, of uh, GPS, GLONASS and uh, Fugro satellites that will give us a very very accurate accurate position. Uh, this one has different functions. We can get the rate of turn. We can get the uh, trim. We cannot. We also have a berthing mode, so that which, which is very good to use when we are berthing because we can get to exactly the same position on the decimeter, which we had the previous time we were in the same port. Or we can set up as many as many uh, positions as we want, so we can berth very accurately. Uh, we do have the joystick. This one is used for uh, maneuvering. Some like to use it, some don't like to use it. I'm not so happy about it because uh, on a cruise ship or on this, uh, in, uh, in Star Cruises anyway, you don't get to maneuver until you are a staff captain or, or captain. So that means that you can go 10 years in the company without maneuvering. So the few few changes, chances you have are really maneuvering. That is when you are anchoring or something. Uh, so you, you maneuver but not to, 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 uh, to the berth. And then uh, using this one you don't really, you don't really learn how to, how the, uh, what you're doing. You just, it's more like a computer game. So, uh, the basics first you have to learn how to how to maneuver before you start using a, a joystick that is my opinion anyway uh, it does have one very good function that you can set the when you anchor we can have the stern thruster running and then you can set the heading so it keeps the heading it's like a heading mode so you can starboard 10 flag marker Is it for uh, contact? contact? Yes. Okay, so that was an example of the lookout. He's looking out now when we're at the open sea. <coughs> There's not much traffic, but and the visibility is very good, but he can keep it. It's very important for, for, for us to have him to keep uh, an eye for the fishing markers and so on, because we don't want to get uh, our propellers entangled in any fishing markers, or especially the nets to which they are attached. We can see our stability from here. Uh, we have uh, all as it should. We can also uh, see what happens if we if we fill one tank. We can see we can like uh, simulate how how the stability will change if we fill or empty a tank and so on. Um, and we do have an uh, end arm system. We are now in the green. That means we should always try to keep it in the green. This is the trim level. So depending on the speed, we should have different kind of trim. The trim is how the ship is uh, in a longitudinal direction, laying in the water. If if it's if it has a uh, 
bigger draft forward then we have a forward trim like we have now and if it has a bigger draft aft then it is aft uh, trim now in this situation we have a static uh, we have a static trim means that if we are alongside we this forward trim of 0 0.21 would be more which we can actually check on this one uh, see the trim is 20 eight centimeters then static so what did we have in the yeah we have 20 so usually I mean the ship will uh, kind of race up in the front when you when you the faster you go the more the higher it will go so we try to always keep it uh, in the green here for fuel efficiency and the way we use, we keep it in the green is here We are now, uh, Renato is now uh, healing, he's using the healing system to keep us upright, he's using the forward and the aft uh, healing tank and he's pumping water to starboard. Here you can see the inclinometer list, we have half a degree list to port. So he's compensating for that by pumping over water in the healing tanks to starboard side. Okay. It's a bit tricky because we are also uh, rolling a little bit at the moment because we have swell on our port bow. Uh, we are not really we are not rolling a lot. We do have the stabilizers out. Uh, stabilizers have most effect if you have the, the if you have the waves or the <laughs> or the swell from uh, from the uh, from the quarters or from uh, from about. So it doesn't make much of a difference when you have the swell like this, but uh, for the sake of minimum disturbance for the passengers and to show that we have done everything to keep the ship from rolling, we have the stabilizers out anyway. Uh, and now we stop pumping. So now we have a list just more or less upright. Then we can see some of the other functions we have. The third officer is also this, uh, controlling the where we fill the the. We are producing our own water. Uh, we are currently producing four, 44 uh, cubic me uh, cubic meters per hour. So that is normal when we are running on two engines. If we are running on three engines, it's normally around 55, 60 uh, cubic meters per hour. Uh, and then we, the third officer is deciding where to put, where to consume from, and where to fill the tanks. So we are now filling the forward tank and consuming the aft tank. So this is how we can control the trim from here. We can, if we fill forward, the ship will be more heavy in the front and we will get the forward trim. Same thing if we consume aft. Uh, here we can also, with, with these uh, tanks we can also on a long time perspective uh, uh, control the, the healing of the ship. Now if we know that we're gonna have a lot strong wind from from the south and the coming uh, voyage we can we can fill more so have the more of the tanks on, on port side uh, I mean from port if we have the wind from port we can fill the tanks already in port on port side so that we compensate for that for the future so to speak uh, here we can also see some other things we can see the power management system what engines are running we currently we have two engines running we have a shell door indication these are the shell openings they are indicating green so all the all the shell doors are are properly closed we can also check that all the lifeboats are connected to their battery chargers also yeah, we are also recorded. Everything that I have said now has been recorded on the VDR. This is like the corresponding, this is like the black box they call it on the on the airplanes. We also have the same. It is recording our uh, um, radars. It's recording what we say. It's recording the, what we do with the engines. It's recording the rudder movements. More or less everything that we do here. Uh, yeah, as I said, now we have bridge metal level one. If when we get to more confined waters, when uh, we are getting closer to port, 
then uh, captain and staff captain captain will come to the bridge and uh, uh, I, as you can see I'm already here uh, so this is for uh, and confined waters and uh, uh, rivals and departures uh, so that we have a stronger bridge team and more experienced bridge team uh, staff captain and captain will go out to the bridge wing later on and do the maneuvering uh, Today it's staff captain. And uh, today, Captain Jon, my co navigator, and uh, staff captain uh, uh, Marcus is the team coordinator. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Stay